Hello, everyone. John Flynn here from Flynn Real Estate here today with Anya Butko here to give you our honest and professional opinions regarding the 2022 Canadian housing market. We won't be boring you today like last week or two weeks ago with the open house. It was kind of long and drawn out. We're going to keep this quick and to the point. Uh, today, we have some very important information regarding the new open, open bidding process that's starting next year. And I'm just going to kind of introduce it here in a second, but let me just tell you what it's about. The government, and this is not new news, this is old news. The government announces key changes to REBA effective next year. And so Anya, yeah, tell us a little bit more about that, Anya. The following changes will take effect on April 1st, 2023. So the the first and the major, not major one, but the first one they are uh, going to do, they are going to rename the Real Estate and Business Broker Act, REBA, uh, to Trust in Real Estate Services Act, TRESA. All right, let me just stop you right there. So. Yeah. So we've had this REBA, it's called REBA 2002. It's like our law. It's the laws we abide by as realtors with, you know, all, everything, everything we have to do with our code of ethics and, and whatnot, and how we actually, you know, keep privileged information like the prices of homes or what they've sold for or what the offers are. We can't disclose that right now. And, you know, anyway, there's that's another debate. We'll get into that in a minute. So anyway, so they've decided to change this to the Trust in Real Estate Services Act. And I just, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think the the first one was a lot more professional. Like, and it sounds more for professional. Than yeah, the it, one. <laughs> it does. And now they call it the Trust in Real Estate Services Act. So I think, okay, like, uh, first of all, I did, I did Google, like, trust real estate or trust realty. And there is a couple out there that are called trust whatever right. realty and stuff, which yeah. I just, I, I don't know, it's like, trust me like when you when you ask people and you put it in the thing to trust you that's the first it's a big red flag and uh so i just wanted to i want to look at like what other laws or acts in government like does the government have uh, a trust in the government act like trust in the real estate services act trust in the government right like like that's just it's just wrong like <laughs> yeah sounds yeah not right it sounds not right and after reading this i'm thinking well maybe we should change our name and I'm and I'm thinking like maybe it's Flynn Real Estate Trustworthy Inc. And do you, do you think people <laughs> would trust us more if we if we did that? No, I think when people hear the word trust, it's kind of a red flag. Like you mentioned it, why I should trust these guys if I even don't know them, right? I, I yeah. don't know. And and okay, so. And sorry for all you realtors out there, but we don't have the best name for being the most trustworthy people. Uh, and, and again, in every business, there's people that are not trustworthy. And there are. There's in real estate, there's a bunch of snaky, untrustworthy agents. So to me, it's kind of like there's a there's a pub in St. Catharines. I don't know if you've heard. It's called The Honest Lawyer. Right. Hello. This is the name of the bar or the uh, there's a there's a restaurant in Fawn Hill called the Culinary Dropout. So it's like <laughs> but it's like a nice restaurant, but it's it's like a pun or a play on words. So to me, that's like saying the honest lawyer, you know, the, the, the trustworthy real estate agent or the trustworthy car salesman. Like it's I think it's just going a little too far. And for this to be in the name of the act, I think it's a little far fetched. And I think they should have used better words. And uh, anyway, that's what I got to have to say about that. So, so what, what is the other major thing in this act beside the name of it? Now there is administrative changes and, you know, bigger fines and whatever else. There's a bunch of administrative stuff in this. It's the same act, by the way, they just renamed it. It's still 2002, if you notice, right? So it's yeah. the same act. They've just changed the name and changed like the pillars of our real estate thing. And this is just for Ontario, by the way, this is not Canadian. This is an Ontario act, uh, Alberta and BC, they have their own laws and acts to, to abide by, but I believe, and uh, people, you can comment down below. This is the first, we're the first province or territory in Canada to allow open bidding. So how, how does this change the bidding process, Anya? So sellers, uh, will no longer be limited to selling their property through a closed or traditional blind offer system. Now, new regulation gives sellers the option to do it for an open bidding. How so, do you feel about it? 
Okay, okay. So first of all, let's just say okay. the original purpose of changing this act or changing the, the reba was to stop blind bidding. It wasn't to it was to allow open bidding, but it was to completely stop well, it, it because it wasn't right. fair. So the, not only did they not stop it, now they gave the choice. So the power is still in the seller's hand, right? So yeah, and I think okay. My first question is, well, if I have a seller, do you, do you, do you think a seller will opt for this option? Like they say, yeah, let's let let's do open bidding, guys. Like, would they do that for sellers? Like, I would say no. If I will be pre representing this seller, I would say no, go for blind bidding. So because you will be in a better position than for open bidding process. But being on the other side, being on the buyer side is completely different situation because you need to know what's going on, what other options are, and I, what I your agree. competitives look like. Yeah, so I agree with you somewhat. I think that... Uh, given the, how the market has been in the lead up to today, as a seller, you'd be stupid not to take blind bidding because it drives up the price. Yes. And, um, there are actually, a couple of things I want to touch on. One, maybe we'll start with our own experiences, right? And now this is not our doing. We have to uh, follow the rules. And the rules are we cannot disclose the price to other buyers. If we have another offer, we, we're not allowed to disclose the price. The only thing we can disclose is how many offers we had right that's correct and and sometimes the irrevocable which you're not even supposed to disclose that but you'll say we have to deal with it by this time at night right you you kind of you don't let it out the cat out of the bag but you, you still have to deal no, with we're that very limited with the information we can provide to other uh agents and yeah. buyers so let's talk about our own experiences anya in with the blind bidding which has been the rules up until now and you know we've seen it at the height of the market i think the biggest number we had over was 130,000 if I'm if I'm not mistaken. So I we had so. 130,000 not over asking. This was over the next highest offer. So somebody paid potentially paid 130,000 more than the 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 second offer would have been. And here's the problem with that. First of all, it did drive up the prices 100% when because oh, yeah. now that sets a new precedent potentially if depending on what point of the market it was. So then the next one, they're going to want say it's a million dollars. Well, they're going to want, they're going to do the same thing. And the next person is going to give them so much more, which could be another 50,000 over the next highest price. So now you're at, so now you're, you're artificially increasing the baseline for a community with, with those prices, because these, yeah. these, they're not getting true market value or even supply and demand. Like it's okay paying 50,000 over when there's 10 offers, chances are you're not over by 50,000. Chances are a lot of them went over, but so it did help drive these crazy uh, price spikes. And I think it was a major part of it. There was, uh, I don't think inventory was the biggest part. I think it was low interest rates and blind bidding. I think it was, it was huge, right? It was. Um, so, and so again, we had, and another thing, remember, so we're not going to give any details of this because it's privileged and private information. And we're not going to even say the city, but think about, the second agent, the one, the eight, the people in second place, right? And of course, there was always that you're in, you're in the top three. You know, we, we would, we would, we could say, you know, we, we couldn't break the rules, but you could say, oh, you're in the top three offers, and we try to, you know, help them along. But there's only so much we could say. Well, the second agent, uh, the first agent, first of all, has no clue. They wake up the next day, sure. their client's happy. Yeah, they paid, and they're gonna. Oh, I wonder how much I paid over. And of course, what do we say on? <laughs> <laughs> like when when we oh you it was oh they're all pretty close or you know are you it was you know within you know we wouldn't lie totally lie I would always say you uh, they wanted you know or if they did pay that hundred and something over the conversation would be well they weren't going to take much less and they wouldn't have because they wanted so much too but right. I've never heard in whether it's coming out of my mouth and I'm not going to say otherwise or another agent's mouth. Oh, you were a hundred thousand more than the last offer. Like, no, I've never heard that. Meanwhile, no, there were no. so many that were like that. But of course, the agent, oh, it was close. You guys were real close. It's always the same story. So, so the first agent and the first people wake up, have no clue, wondering, did I pay a hundred thousand over more than I should have? Or they have no clue. But the second agent, they go look on MLS to see what that house sold for. They know exactly what happened. So the people who didn't even get the house knows what happened, they know what happened. 
Yeah. And the actual purchaser has no clue. And, you know, they might fish around and find it, but usually it would have no clue, which and it was it was just like it was highway robbery, in, in my opinion. And it was because of the process. And I wasn't a fan of it. I hated it. Um, it was great for the sellers, but the sellers, though, they go buy a, uh, the house and they have to same thing happens to them. Right. When they're a buyer. So sure. it was just this, this, you know, big snowball of whatever of of all these offers that were going way over what they should have so now i guess it brings us back to when is when is the blind bidding useful well we saw when it was useful right it was useful in in markets that were insane and yeah. when it's a rising market an increasing market and so now open bidding would an open bidding process be good in that market probably not because they're going to know I'm only going to go 5,000 over that highest offer. And that's so, it. Yeah. But it's not up to the buyer. It's up to the seller. And the seller is going to say, no, I don't want that. I don't want that process. But on the way down, I think open bidding is going to be useful for the sellers. I think blind bidding is going to work against them because say they get a, whatever, a house for 900,000 it's listed at, and they have an offer for 850. Well, they can't turn around and tell the next buyer, I already have an offer for 850. I'm not taking your offer for 850. But if it's open, they can say, I already got 850 and it's a sales tool. And they say, I want eight. Like I don't, I'm not taking 850. I have it here. Look, it's, it's on record. Um, so I think on the way down, open bidding is useful, but on the way up, it's not, it's obviously not useful. But again, this is all in the seller's hands. It doesn't help the buyers at all. It's, it's a tool that the seller gets to pick and choose. The buyer doesn't get to choose when to use open bidding or blind bidding. So yeah. I think it's just like lipstick on a pig or whatever you want to call it. Just like a lot of the rules they make nowadays and laws that the, the government, they, they do it to make it look like they're doing something, but it's really not going to change anything for the buyers anyway. And yeah, it doesn't look like it will be changed for the buyers. In no. that way, they, they are kind of saying in this act that they, we are uh, protecting consumers. Yeah, the consumer protection. Yeah, it says yeah. right there, new rules new aim rules. to increase consumer confidence and protection. But it's not. It's not how this it's part of it. Yeah. This part of it isn't. I know the other parts will. There's stiffer fines for agents that are unethical and all the rest of that. Yeah, and I, which is good. Yeah, and we had fines before, right? Yeah. But I think that whole, you know, trust in real estate, whatever act, it's just it's just a really bad name. And it just kind of draws attention to the distrust. And they talks about it in the act, like trying to hold the agents more accountable and keep the you know industry honest. I think that, yes, it does need it. You know, it does need more honest people because it's like the Wild West out there sometimes with some of these agents. And I don't I don't like dealing with them. I like obviously dealing with people that you don't have to lie and cheat to to sell a house, right? You just need to, yes. to do your job. So yeah, let us know in the comments what you think about the open bidding process or the new, the new open bidding process. And of course, this new name with Trust in the Real Estate Services Act or Trust in Real Estate Services Act. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it. Maybe it's just me. But again, comment below and let us know what you think. Until next time, I will see you later and have a good night. Bye, guys. This video was brought to you by Glendalock Whiskey. <laughs> um, Is it the real whiskey? Oh, yeah. From, oh, right okay. From, right from Ireland, yeah. It looks like apple juice. First, I was thinking you're drinking apple juice. <laughs> it's in a whiskey. It's in a whiskey glass.